тобой. Good afternoon, everyone. So, first of all, please uh, turn off your mic. If you have any question, then you have to turn on your mic, ask your question, and again turn off the mic. So, Shani, and I will be your trainer for this training. And this training will be covered in five days. Please turn off your mics. Okay. So this training will be covered in the five days and in all the five sessions we will cover uh, some main tools of the AutoCAD. So first of all, AutoCAD is a 2D drafting software from Autodesk. Till now we have around 33 to 34 versions and the latest version for the Autodesk is 2021. Okay. So we have already provided you the link download the software for the student version if you face any problem you can ask in the group or you can call us on the given number so many of the students will not have the laptop or the computer they can also use the software on the okay. on, the, on the apple or the android okay This is the first session, which is not the second session. This is the first session, the session we have covered previously in the uh, yesterday night around 8.30 to 10.30. This is the same session we are going to start with the same starting. Okay, the second session will start in again uh, on the 8.30 timing. So if you have already part attended the last session, you can uh, join the second session. If you want to learn again, if you want to join this session, you can stay. Okay, and I will cover all the commands after some basic introduction of the software. So first of all, the software that is AutoCAD mainly used for the drafting. It can be used for civil engineering, for mechanical engineering, for architecture, for electrical, for interior designers. Everyone can use this software. Okay, if you have any question, turn on your mic, ask your question. If you don't have any question, please turn off your mic. Don't turn on your mic unless you, have, you don't have any question. Okay. So, going to start the software now. So in this training, I am going to demonstrate on the 2019 version of the AutoCAD. You can download any version. The commands will be similar in all the versions. Okay. So let's start. So first, when you open the software, you will get this home screen. In the home screen, you will get a tab called Start. From, the, from this tab, from this window, you can start a new drawing. You can open a previously saved drawing or you can use the recent drawing from here or you can also start a drawing from this le left top corner here there is a new option and you can again use the recent file from here also so this is called the application button now we have some tools here so here you will also get the new and open file option this is called the quick access toolbar after that to start a file you can select any option from here here or here or you can use the shortcut that is control n for the new file so just click on the start and we will have a template option from control n if you just click here you will directly see a file open right here in the new tab So now if you go to the application menu, you will see there are new tools available. First, we have the new file. You can create the new file from there. Next, we have the open option. You can open the previously saved file from this option. 
Next, we have the save options. You can save your current file or you can save it, save it at different multiple locations. We are going to cover everything. Please wait for some time. I will show you everything in this section. Next, if you want to import any file, as you know, uh, Solid AutoCAD can import a PDF and convert that, that PDF into the drawing. So you can import the PDF from here also. Click here and there will be an option to import the PDF. Next option we have is to export the file. <coughs> okay. So for that, go again here. There is the export option. You can export the file into the PDF or any other compatible format uh, that you can import in different software. Like you can import that in the Revit or the PDF Mac, or you can import that in SolidWorks also. So there is the option to for the other format right here. Next, you have the option to publish. To send the file, you have to publish the file and extract all the files. Or uh, you can merge all the files like external references like you have image, used an image in the drawing. You can select all the files and directly mail the file to any person or to yourself. After that, we have the option to print. You can print your entire work from here and then we have the option to set the units to remove some unwanted objects to see the properties of the drawing from here you can see there is the unit option also okay so to set the unit you can click here or we have set several multiple options available so click here you will see there is a unit option you can set your units according to your need. So the first thing we do in the new drawing is set the unit because if we are working in the architecture mode, we have the units for that here, architectural, because we work in the inch and feet in architectural and civil engineering. In mechanical engineering, we use the decimals, we use the millimeter. So for that, we have the decimal option here. Okay, so select according to your need and set the unit from here you can choose the scale you want right now i want it to be decimal and i want it to be millimeter so set according to your need click ok and your units are saved now if you face any problem related to my voice if you are not getting my voice you can type in the message or you can just ask by opening the mic So next option we have here is the quick access toolbar. We have several uh, commands here right now. First one is the new, after that the open file, save file, save as. Then we have option here for the mobile devices for the web application. If you go here, you will see save to web and mobile. You can directly save to your phone from here. The next option is printing. You can directly print from here, you can directly print from here, or you can press Ctrl C. All the commands will be similar to the Windows, uh, Windows command like Ctrl C, Ctrl V, Ctrl V. All commands will work here. After that, we have the workspace here. Workspace means the tool you see in the working area. Right now, you can see we have the workspace set to the drafting. So if you go to the home tab here, you will see the tools for the drafting. In the drafting, we use the draw tools like line, circle, rectangle. And in the modifier, we use the move, copy, rotate, like these options. We have some several other options. If you select like 3D, you will get the 3D tools in the home tab now. You can see here we have the shapes, we have the 3D tools. So AutoCAD is mainly used for the drafting purpose. So just Click here in the workspace, select the workspace according to your need. Okay, I will repeat the units in few minutes. Wait for a few minutes. So next we have if we have to add another tool to this quick access toolbar, we can just click here and select the tool like I want the layers also. Select that, 
you will get your layer here also you can select the layer if you don't want just uncheck that and the tool will be removed from there So next option we have here is for the search. You can search any command up here. You want to search like uh, about the line, type the line, press enter, and the search option will open if you have the active internet connection. Okay, it will take few seconds, and there will be some help option like that. So wait for the few seconds. It will load and it will show you. All the options related to that command that you have searched. You can see I have searched here line, and it will show you to draw line, line command, and all the other types of line that is available. It will show you everything. If you select circle, it will show you the command related to that. If you want to search the circle command, just click here. It will show you how you can use the circle command. What types are there in the circle command? Okay, so this is the help option. Next, we have the sign in option here. You can sign in here to the Autodesk account. The account you have created to download the software will be applied here, and all your files will be saved on the online system. My voice is repeated because someone is not closing his mic. Please turn off your mics, and you will not face any problem. Okay, so you can sign in from here, and you can access all your file on the other system also, or the on the other location also. It's like the Gmail or any other mail service. You can just like log in and save your file. Next, we have this tool. These tools here. This whole bar is called the ribbon bar. The name is here. You can see this is the ribbon. So this whole bar is called the ribbon bar. In the ribbon bar, we have several tabs like Home, Insert, Annotate, like that. And each tab contains some panels like this. This is the Draw panel, the Modifier panel, and each panel has the tools related to its name. You can choose the panel to move outside or set it according to your need, wherever you want to set the location of this new tool. So to move back, just go to the tab here. You can see there are some dots here. Just drag it from here. You can place it according to your location where you need. I am going to put it back in the front. So here is the draw toolbar. So in this session, we will cover all the tools from the draw toolbar, and we will cover some tools from here from the modify and from the annotation also. So next, your working area. You can see this whole area is your working area. You can create any drawing from here. Next, we have the views. You know that if you create you create any drawing, if you want to create any views, we have to create its views like auto orthographic views, like isometric views, section views, detail views, like that. So all the views. Can be created in a single plane, or you can change the direction from here. In case you want to create any 3D object, you can see that from the front, top, right, any plane you want, or you can see the object in the isometric views also. Right now, you can see there are only two axes, that is x and y. So basically, we are seeing it from the top. That's why we are seeing only two planes, that is x and y. If you want to see it in the 3D, you can just select an isometric from here. You will see we have the three axes x, y, and z like that. So select it on the top because the crafting will be created on a single plane. We don't have to create multiple planes. So a single plane will be required here. Next option is the visual style. If you want to see in the 3D mode, we have some option here like shaded, shaded with edges. If you want to see in the drafting only, use the 2D wireframe always. Okay, so the base setting, the main setting of the software is set the visual style, uh, set the views to the top, set the visual style to the 2D wireframe, nothing else. 
so next option we have here is for the navigation bar we have here the navigation bar up here we have the view cube you can also rotate the view from here you can see the sheet is rotated around 90 degree you can rotate from these points you can change the view from here also you can see this is the front now this is the left this is the top so you can control your sheet according to that in that view cube next we have some navigation option in that you can pan the sheet like select the pan tool drag the sheet and you can move your sheet like that to any location next we have the zoom option you can use some zoom option from here just click here it will make the drawing fully in the screen it will zoom up to the points or up to the drawing like i have a circle here if i lost my circle you can just go here click on the zoom extent and everything will be in full screen so next option we have is for the 3d rotation it is the orbit command you can select it from here just press the left mouse button and drag your mouse you can rotate in 3d also you can see that we are rotating in the 3d plane. okay so you can get the idea from here or from here our views are being rotated like that so this is the orbit command so to get out of the command just press the escape button and you will be outside of the command so next option is select the plane again to top next we have some commands here so first is the command line from where you can enter any command you can control the software with the help of the keyboard also so drag this from these points and dock it in the bottom now you can control this software through the help of some commands like i want to create a line so you can type the word line also or you can just type the l option l character and press enter the line command will be activated you can select the C and press enter, the circle will be activated. Like that, you can specify any command. If you want to specify the dimension, go for the D. I, M. Now you see here are uh, some dimension types. Okay. So D, I, M, press enter, and there will be the, all the dimension types here. We can also choose the object or the command from here we can also start the command from here also this is the command line next we have few options that is model space and paper space so model space is this one you can see right now we are in the model so model space is the area where we create our drawing everything will be created in the model space and to print those views or print your drawing you have to go to the layout and there you can create some sheet setup and create the views according to your need and your drawing will be created so next option the last option we have is the status bar this is the complete status bar here we have several two tools here like you can see this is the grid you can see the grid right now the background if you uncheck this one you will see there is no grid so you can use the grid from here we have several other commands that we are going to cover step by step in the complete session. So, if you want to add or remove any tool from here or in here, you can just go to the customization, the last option in the status bar, click on that and choose any command you want. Like, I want to enable the transparency, so just click here and there will be the tool transparency. If you don't want to see it, just uncheck that button and you will not see the command here. So these are the tools that are available in the user interface in the drafting and annotation workspace. So you can use the new file to create multiple files. You can create multiple files from here also like that. You will get the drawing tool. You can close the file from here. If you want to save the file, Click on the save and define the location and define the name. Click on the save and your file will be saved.
you can close the file like that and you can see that the recent file I have created is this point one. I can open it from here. Just click on that and the file will be open like that. Or I can open it from the location. Go to the open file from here or from here and choose the file on the desktop. We have the point one. Select that, click open, and here is your point. Okay, so these are the basic things we need to know about the AutoCAD. Now we are going to start with the tool for the 2D drafting in the draw toolbar. So how to create some shapes like line, rectangle, elliptical shape, circular shape, some polygonal shape like that. For that we have the first option here, the draw, in that we have the first command that is line. To create a line, you can use the command from here or you can just type the L and press enter and there will be the command specify first point. Next, you have to specify the first point now. You can use the first point as the origin or you can define that by, by coordinate system. Coordinate system means if we want to start from the origin, so the coordinate system will require the value of x and y because we have the x y plane. So enter the x value that is 0, separate with the help of comma and define the value of y, 0 and press enter. You can see now we have specified the first point that is 0, 0 and it is attached to the origin. Next it is asking for the next point where you want to specify your next point. I want my next point to be somewhere here at a distance of 10 mm. Okay. So for that you can just type the coordinate here like in the x direction I want a value of 10 and in the y direction I don't want any change so value will be 0. So you can see if you zoom here you will get a line for the length of 10 like that. Or the second option will be you can specify the direction right now you can see I can move in any direction. So we have a tool that is called the ortho mode that will make lines in the horizontal or vertical axis. For that tool we have the option here you can see that the ortho mode and we can use the shortcut that is F8. Press F8 and you will see the tool will be activated. The shortcut will be defined in the command you can see in the pop up menu we have the ortho mode with F8. So turn on if you need to create some or vertical and horizontal line. So define the direction like that. Define the value. I want this line to be of 5 units. So press 5 and press enter. And here we have the line of 5 units. So next it is again asking for the two next point or we have two options here. First option that is undo. You can click here and you will be back on the previous point. Now you can see while creating one line we don't have the second option that was available after creating the second line. So create the line like I want to define 5 and when you create two lines you will get the option of the close. You can close your shape by just clicking here or you can just click here directly. So close will end the command and you will have a close command perfect. A triangular shape like that. Okay, so to define the dimension, we have the option of dimensions here in the annotation tab. You can see in the annotation we have the dimension here. So just select the dimension. You can see here, select object or specify first extension line. So select object, we can directly select the object like that. You can see the value will be here, like that. We will have the value. So select the first object, define the location of the dimension where you want to place it and click and the dimension will be defined. Right now the size is very big, we have to adjust the size. So we can adjust the size by pressing D. First of all escape out from all the commands, it should be blank. So press D and press enter, we will be in the dimension by manager. Now go to the modify. Go to the fit here and specify the overall scale 
like I want it to be 0.2 and click OK. Set the values to current those and we will have the size reduced to that dimension of the dimension line. Okay, so go to the dimension, define the dimension like you can select the object like that or you can select two points from here to here. If you turn off the ortho mode, you will see this will be the aligned dimension. If you go here, you will get the vertical dimension. If you go here, you will get the horizontal dimension. So these are the linear dimension, these two. And this one is the aligned dimension. So choose according to your need and you can create an object like that. Okay. So if you have any question till now, you can ask that. So, is my voice clear to everyone? I will repeat that. Is, is my voice audible? Is it clear? Okay. So, how to change the scale of this dimension? You just have to press D, press enter and you will be uh, directed to a dimension style menu. In that, just go to the modify right here and there is the dimension styles. Just go to the fit. Don't change the line length, the symbol size, the text size. Just go to the fit here and there is the scale for everything. Okay. You can see everything is in the proper scale. In the proper scale, you can change it from a single value. You can see the scale for dimension feature. I am going to use the overall scale that is 0.2. If you want to decrease further, just type 0.1 and click OK. To set it current, there is the option set current. That means everything will be updated now if I go outside. Okay. So in this way, you can create an object. After that, how to select the object? You can just click on it. You can just click outside and go here. Here we have the green box. If you go to the other side, right here, you will have the blue box. So this green box will select everything it touch. Like you can see, if you touch the dimension, it will select that. If you touch this one, it will select that. If you touch everything like that, it will select all the lines that are intersecting this box like that. But the other side is the window option. In this you have to specify, in this you have to select the complete object inside this window. Okay, if I just drag this one up to here, you see there is no selection. If you go here, select like that, there is no selection. But if you do this one, this is the selection, this is the cross, this is the window. To select the object, you just have to select that object into the window. So object will should be completely in the window like that, like that. Okay. So this is the window selection. This is the cross selection, and this is the manual selection. You can just click and okay. okay. So now I want to delete these. So select like that. Press the delete button, and those lines will be deleted. So now, where to use the line command? First of all, I'm going to insert a drawing inside here. I'm going to insert an image that is available. So just drag an image and drop somewhere here. You will see there is an rectangular shape. Basically, that's the image. So place where you want to see your image. Define the point. Now define the scale, how much bigger you want. Right now you can see the base image size is width 131, height 144. So if I select the scale factor to 1, the height and width will be this one. If you want to scale that, you can define the scale like 0 0.1, 0 0.2 to make it smaller. If you uh, define the value higher than 1, the scale will be increased. 
So I'm just going to define the one right now. After that, it will ask for the rotation angle. That rotation angle, I'm going to define the zero. So you can see here is the drawing that we have. Okay. So how to check the dimension of this drawing? So you can go to the dimension, select the endpoints like that, and drag the dimension down here. And if you zoom in, you will see there is the dimension, which is the 131. Place the dimension where you want, and like that, you can create a dimension. So this is 131, my dimension here is 4, so I want to scale it down. So we are going to cover the scale in the next session. We will cover there properly. Right now I am just going to scale it down by just clicking here, dragging it to some small points like that. So right now I want to create this shape. So here you have to see what are the shapes given. So you can see there are only the lines that is in horizontal or vertical way. We have a line of 4 that is horizontal. We have a line here with no value, but you can see the dimension up here. You can see the dimension is given here, that is 1. Okay. So, we have the dimension 1 here. Okay, wait for a second. Okay, so we have this dimension defined here, one value. We have this gap defined here, that is two. So this gap is also similar. This one, so this is two again. We have this gap here, that is two. We have the total height that is 7, we have the total length that is 4. So we have all the values, we just have to create the object. To import the drawing, to import the image, just drag and drop, drag a drawing from other side or from the folder and drop it here. Okay, basically I have two systems, two window attached, two monitors attached so that you don't see my folder. I have a folder here like that. I can just drag an image and drop it here and you can see we have the shape here just define the location where you want to start what scale you need uh, right now you can see it is 109 if i select point 0.1 it will be 10 so i'm going to specify the unit to point 0.1 it will ask for the angle so that will be zero and here is the shape so like that you can see insert a image insert an image inside the drawing so we have the lines, so select the line from here and the other option is L, press enter. If you press the space button, it will also act as the enter. So L enter, now it is asking for the first point. So we don't have any point location defined here, so I can just start from anywhere like that. After that, we have a line of 4 in the horizontal direction. To create the horizontal and vertical drawing, we have the option of the ortho mode or shortcut is FA. Please write down these shortcuts that I am going to define that I am showing you. To create a horizontal or vertical line, we have the ortho mode right here. We can define the direction. Now define the value. We have the value 4. So define the direction. Define the value it. that is 4. Press enter. We have the line of 4 length. After that, we have this direction and the value is 1, so press enter, so press 1 and press enter, we have the line here. After that, we have a line here, the value of the line will be 4 minus this thickness, so this thickness is 1, that will be 3, so direction and length, that is 3. Upside, we have the height similar to this one, so that is 2. Down, uh, outside, we have the dimension that is 2. Upside the dimension that is 1, back side the dimension 2, upside the dimension 2, outside the dimension 2, and up here. Sorry, we don't have the dimension 2 here, we have the dimension 3. So to go back, just click on the undo, or you can just type the blue letter. You can see we have the U and the blue. So type U, 
enter and the command will be supplied. So define the direction, define the value like that and this is the shape. So complete it by defining the values. Now I know that I have to just close it up here and I have started from this point and this is the continuous line. So just you can click here or type C enter and the command will be closed like that. Okay, if you create an object somewhat like this one and get out from the command and use the command again from here, if you want to join now, if you click on the close, your object will be closed to the start point of the second or the latest command that you have started. So don't escape or don't select the close command in case you have not started from the start point. So after this we have to define the values. To define the values we have the option here in the annotation that is dimension. Select the dimension. So there is the option select object. You can select an object like that. Find the location where you want or we can select specify first extension line like I can specify first point here point here and I can define this direction I can define this direction so I'm going to define this one right here so this is the two dimension so the easy option is this one just define these values like that like that and define this height that is that. so these are the dimension that you require that are required to create this one. Any question till now? If you have any question in the line or in the dimension, you can ask. Okay. So going to start uh, going to start with the next option how to draw. We just have to see the drawing what the shape is given and according to that we have to choose the tool from here. Like we have the line now specify the start point like that for the straight line define the direction define the value I want the five length so five enter press escape Check the dimension, you will have the object of five length. Okay. So after this, we have the next command that is the polyline. So line and polyline, these are the two separate things. Yes. Do you have any question? Okay. So select the polyline or the shortcut will be P for polyline. First press the escape, type the P, you will see which there is P for pan, PL for polyline. So type the PL, press enter and we have the command here, the polyline. It is asking again for the first point. So specify the first point. It is asking for the next point. You can see the line width is zero. Line width is zero, and we have some other options here. In the line command, we don't have these type of options. We only have the undo option. But in polyline, we have all the types of options. Like you can create a line like that. If you want to create an arc, you can just go to the arc. You can create an arc like that. Okay. If you want to define the radius, you can from here. If you just want to click anywhere, you can click here. Now the arc will continue, but if you want to get back to the line, you have the option here that is line. If you are in the line, we have the arc option. If we are in the arc, we have the line option, like that. So create your drawing according to your need. Next option is half width, and the last option is width. Both are the similar option. It's like the radius and the diameter. You know that the diameter, the radius is the half of the diameter or the diameter is the double of the radius. 
so half width will be the half value of the width so what is the width it is the thickness of the line to so define the width click on the width we have to define two values to the width you can see that line has two points start and end so specify the starting width i am going to start with one value and going to continue with one value till the end so you can see we have the width here of one value we can create a line like that okay if you want to differentiate the value you can just go to the width i want to start the width up to 2 and i want to end with the width of 0 So press enter. So here you can see we have created an arrow-like shape because at the start we have the two length, two width, and at the end we have the zero width. So define the length you want, or you can just click like that, and here you can see there is an arrow shape. So how you can do that? Just go to the width, define the starting. I'm going to press by the zero at the start, and two at the end. You can see that we have an shape here that is. So here we have the zero width. Here we have the two width. Define the total length, and we can create a polyline with some width of. So like that, you can work with the polyline. Press Escape, close, or you can just close the command like here. So the close command will join the start and end option. Okay. So, what is the difference between the polyline and the line? Wait for a second. Okay. So, what is the difference? If you select the object created with line, you will see all the objects, all the entities will be selected separately. If you select the polyline object, you will see everything will be selected continuously in a single click. So, you can see that. in both the cases we have some blue points here so these points are called grips and we can use the grip to have some option like that like scratch and length and we can scratch this line we can provide the length to this line wherever whatever we need in the polyline you will have multiple options you can see there are two options there are only two options there are only three options so you can scratch like that you can add a new point like that okay and you can remove that point also like that so you can create multiple lines from there so in the middle we have another option that is you can stretch this line like that you can add a vertex like you can create a point inside and the last option is to convert to the arc this line will be converted to an arc whatever distance you need just click on that point or if you want to go back to the line you can see we have the arc here we can go to the line also you can see here if you go here you can convert that arc into the line just go on the point you can convert that to be arc according to your needs so this is the difference between the polyline and the line polyline can be selected in one selection and line can be selected in separate entity okay so next option we have is the circle command how to create some circular entity so for that we have six type of circles you can create type and uh, circles with the six type first we know that the circle can be defined with the radius or with the diameter and we need a center to define the value also if we create the circle manually we need to place the projector at the center and we need to set the distance and after that we will create circle so in this case we have first two option that is center and radius and center and diameter whichever you need so look at the drawing that you have Like I have drawn from here. If I drag it inside, you can define that I need to three point one. Okay. So here we have a drawing. There, 
in that drawing we have two circles one is of radius 3 one is of radius 3.5 so we can see that the center is also available the radius is also available so the type is used will be the center and radius to so define the center where you need define it is asking for specify radius of circle we have the radius if we have the diameter we can just click here on the diameter and it will ask for the diameter value so if you can also convert the value you know this is radius 3 so the diameter will be 6 now again use the circle command from c enter you can see it is asking for the center point you find the center and after that it is asking for the radius so in that case you can also specify the radius that is 3.5 and here we have the two circles now to create these circles in the other side also you can use the mirror option you can use the copy option or you can just go to there and create a new circle like you have to create a line from the center to the direction of this one up to the value of 10 and you can use the circle with a center here and a radius of 3 like that or we can just copy these objects select these we have the option here that is copy and from there you have to select a point from the select the center define the direction turn on the ortho for the horizontal define the value that is between gap that will be the 10 so press escape to complete the command and if you go to the dimension check the dimension from here to here that is 10 and you can check the dimension that is in diameter so if you want to see the dimension in the radius go in the options here in the drop down menu here here we will see all the type of dimension i need the radius to select the object and there is the radius the object and there is the radius. So delete, you can select the object and delete that by pressing the delete button. Which one step? Copy or delete or dimension? That was just deleted. You can just create an object, you can just select and delete that. Okay, I have removed that. So now you can see we have the circle. If you select and circle, we have five points in that, point, five blue points. So the center point will move the object from its location like that. You can click here and you can click here. And object will be moved from that point. And from all the quadrants, these four are the quadrants. You can just change the size of the circle according to your need, according to the reference. Okay. So now we have the shape that we need to create some lines that are tangent to this circle. So to create a line that is tangent, select the line. So we have to select the tangent relation. So how to add that? So while selecting the line, don't select the starting point. Before that, we are going to just press the shift. Hold down the shift button and press the right click. You will see there will be a menu. If you just use the search line command and press the right click, the right click will define as the enter. It will work as the enter. So just go to the line. Press the shift button, press the right click and there we have some options. So you can see there is the tangent option, select that. Select the object, you can see the object is tangent to the line. Again we need the tangent here, so again press the shift button, press the right click, go to the tangent and select the object like that. So press escape and we have the line here, that is tangent to both the circle. So again the line. Press the shift, right click, there we have the menu. So leave the shift now, select the tangent, like that. Again, shift and right click, tangent, and circle now. And press escape to exit out, and here we have the shape. 
the line is changing to both the pressure. Is it clear how to make the line changing? Okay. So now you can see we have the shape here, but we have the internal arc also, we have the circle inside also, and here we don't need that internal size. So to delete that, you can just select object and delete, but by doing that, you will also remove the outer side. So to just cut the object from here, inside only, we have a command that is called the trim command. So you can see in the modifier, we have the trim here. If you don't see, sometime it will be on the extent. So here is the trim. Select the trim command. Now you will be, you will see the option select object. Just press enter. Okay. And press the enter. And now you can see that you can just click on that. That will be deleted. Click on that. Okay. Again, go to this trim command, press the enter, and you will have to select the object. Right now, you can select any side. You cannot select this object because for trimming, we need to have the object that is intersecting some other object. So this line is intersecting on this circle. So this circle can be trimmed from inside or from the outside. So you need to trim it from the inside, so select tool and press escape to exit out of command. Okay. Any question in the trim? Okay. So in this way you can create an object with the help of circle. You can use the line tangent by pressing shift and right click and to trim the object you can use the trim command from here. Press the enter button and then select the object you can remove the object from there. Press escape, press it down. Got it? So these are the options in the circle. Next we have multiple type of options. Suppose if you want to create a circle with the value of diameter. Suppose we have a circle here in the center with a diameter of 2. So go to the circle here, select the center diameter directly. Now specify the center point. So this will be the center point. Now specify the diameter. You can see here, specify diameter of circle. So diameter will be 2, the center. And here we have a circle with diameter. To check the dimension, go to the dia. No, sorry, go to the dimension, select the object like that, or you can go directly here, select the dimension in the diameter type, and select that. Okay, so this is the diameter type dimension. Next option we have is for the two points, these are for the reference points only. Suppose we have a line or a rectangular shape like that. And I need a circle that is crossing through this point and this point. So go to the circle. We have the two point reference. We know the two points. The circle is crossing through those two points. And here we can create it like this one. Okay. Basically, we just need to specify two points for the two point circle. Select first one, select second one, like that, like that, like that. You choose according to your need, and here we have the two point circle. In this, we don't have to specify any value, and you can use the command. Next, we have the three point option in case we have the three references that your circle is crossing to this point, this point, and this point. You can create a circle crossing three points first one, this one, second one, this one, third one, this one. Or your circle is crossing through these three points like that. Here is the circle point. Okay, you don't have to specify any value, you can just go to the three points of the mouse. So, these are the four options. Next, 
command that we have is sometimes you will you will have a shape that is tangent to two sides and you will have a radius to the world. Suppose my circle is tangent to these two lines and I have a radius of two applied there. So for that we have the option type that is two tangent and the radius of two. So select the command, select the first tangent, select the second tangent and define the radius. So radius into two, enter and here we have the circle with the radius of two and it is tangent to this line and this line. Okay, so again, if we have a circle that is tangent to two and three, it is not compulsory that two should be line, it can be circular also. So go to the tangent, tangent and radius, specify the first tangent, the second tangent and define the radius like one, so here will be the circle. If you want a circle in this side, you can just select in this quadrant like that in here and keep the center in this direction to find the value. And there will be a circle, it will change it to this one and this one. And the radius is one. Okay. So the, this is the tangent option. If you don't have the radius also, you have the circle that is tangent at three locations, like the tangent at this one, this one, and this one, this line. You can just go to the last option that is three tangent. You can specify all the three tangents where it is So you can see, so you can create a circle like that. You can also select the tangent like this one, this one, and this one. The circle will be tangent to all the three of them. There is no value required. Okay. If you have any question, you can ask. Okay. Which one? Which one you need? Okay, so I will explain the last one. If you have three tangencies, if you want to create a circle with three tangencies. Multiple, I have used the circle command to create multiple till now. I have not used the copy here. I have used just the three tangents. First one tangent, second one tangent and third one. You can see the circle is tangent to all three entities. Okay. So these are the types of circles we have. After that, we have some types of arcs. From here, we have 11 types, but most of the places are similar. So read the name and you will get the idea how you can create that. So here we have the three point, three point arc. So for that, you have to specify first point, center, third, like that and you can create a three point arc. Basically, it will be created with the help of some references, like I want to create an arc here. So go to the three point arc. I need an arc from here. It should be coincident as here, and the third point should be here. So it can be used to create an arc like that. Okay, basically three reference points required. So next option will be, you can see the name, it is the start, the center and end. Read the name in the sequence, you have to specify the start point first, the center point second and the end point after that. So select the command, specify the start point, specify the center point and now specify the end point up to where you need to create the arc. Turn on the ortho mode to create the arc according to your view. So I'm going to define the center point or the last point is this one. You can see the arc will be created like that. So this was the start point, this was the mid, and we have the arc right here. If you want to create that arc in the other side, so this one is the start, this one is the mid, and the arc will be created in this direction. So arc will be created in Anti-clockwise always to define 
to edit according to your needs. Like that, you can create an arc. So just read the name and specify the arc according to your needs. Right now, we have the second option that is the ortho mode should be turned on when you need to zoom in the horizontal or vertical direction. Okay, like you want to create a line that is in horizontal direction, turn on the ortho mode. If you want to use some reference that is horizontal or vertical, turn on the ortho mode. Okay. So next option is start center angle. If you have to create an arc that is at an angle, so specify, uh, select this one here. Define the start point. I have specified this start point here. Find the center, and after that, you can specify the angle. You can just click here, like we have created uh, in the previous, or you can specify the value, like I want to create a 45 degree angle arc. So, this will be the arc at 45 degree angle. You can see by creating a line, you can just check the angle which goes to line. Okay, this is for the reference only. This line is for the reference only, the main object is here. So you can see you can create an arc with some angle. Just select the type, start center angle. This is the start point, this is the center point, and the angle should be at the 90 degree. So like that, you can create an arc. You can see this is at the 90 degree. Okay. So we have some similar option. You can see we have the start, center, end, and start, center, angle. If you go down here, you can see now we have the center first, then the start, then the end. So it is the opposite option. Before start, we have the center now here. Center, start, end. So define the center first, define the start, then define the end point up to a certain point or up to a location like that. Or you can specify center start angle, define the center, define the start and the angle like 75 degree, and here will be the arc at an angle of 75 degrees. So go to the dimension, click here, click here, and here is the option for the angle. Okay. So next option we have is the start center length. So length will be this one. If we check the length from this point to this point, straight length, that is, you can define from here. If you know the length, you can use this option. Define the start point, define the center, and define the length you need from this point to this point according to the need. Like I want the length to be 3. You can check the length from here to this point to this point, which is the straight length. If you want to check the arc length, you also have that type here. You have the arc length. Select that, select the arc, and here it is the arc length. Means if you make it straight, the length of the arc will be this one. Okay, so again we have the similar option here that is center start length. So define the center point, define the start point, and define the length you need. Like I need a length of 4, so you can check the length from this point to this point. So this is the length option. Now the main option are left, that is if we have start and angle, you don't have the center, you have the start and end point, you can select the start here the end here and angle like 90 degrees so you can see if you select the arc the arc will be created with the, with the angle of 90 degrees like that so it will be the 90 degree or if you have the values also you have the radius type you can create with the help of start end and radius so this is the start point this is the end point i have the radius here I think it's 5. I'm going to consider the 5 radius. So there will be the arc created with the 5 radius like that. And we have the start and end. So we should uh, we have to define the minimum value with the with this gap. We have to define at least half of this gap. 
so that the line in the arc can be created. Like here, we know that this arc has a radius of 3.5, and we have the start and end point. So go to here, go to the start and radius. So if I select the start point up here and end point down here and define the radius that is 3.5, the arc will be created inside. Because I have told you that the arc will work in the counter clockwise. So to create the arc outside, you have to select the start here and here and define the radius of 3.5. And it will create the candle circle. You cannot define the value lower than 3.5. That will be not possible. If you create the higher value, that can be, be that can be defined. The object will be created like that. And the other option is start and direction to create semi circle directly. You have one option. Define the start and turn on the ortho mode. And here we have the semi circle like that. You can Define the direction, just click, you have a semi circle here. Okay. Again, start and direction, specify the start point, specify the end point, define the direction directly. If you turn off the ortho mode, you can see the arc can be created like this. Okay. So turn on the ortho to create the semi circle. And the last option in the arc is uh, continuous. That is, it will continue from the last point and it will be tangent to the last point. Like that, go to the continuous. It will start from the last point. Turn off the auto. It can be seen like this. It is a tangent line and continues to the last point. You can see it according to your need, whatever you need. Let's go to that point and the arc will be seen. So these are the types of Arts. Okay, uh, these are the types of arts. I am not audible. Uh, am, am I audible to everyone? Okay, any other can you see? Yes, yes, okay. So these are the types of the art. Now we have to, uh, we have next command that is rectangular. If you have any question related to the art, please ask. Best white one ortho mode. Ortho mode is required to create the semi circle. Okay, if you don't turn on the ortho mode, the arc can be created at any angle with any radius. If you turn on the ortho, it will be created in semi circle like I have created in both sides. So next option is the rectangular. If you want to create a rectangle, we have the option here that is rectangle. The shortcut will be R E C press enter and here we have the rectangle. Now specify first corner point. It is asking for the first point. It is asking for the other point. If you have two references, like we have a circle or like we have a line like that. If I want to create a rectangle that is start from here and end at this point, we can go directly to the rectangle from here or the shortcut. We can specify the first point this one and the last point this one and here we have the rectangle line with the help of some reference. If you want to create a rectangle with the help of some value, like I want a rectangle with length 20 and with height or width 10. So go to the rectangle. Okay, define the first point. Now we have the second point option, but with that we have some more options that is dimension, area, and rotation. So we know the dimension, the length and the width. Select the dimension. It is asking for the length that will be in the x direction. The length is 20. Enter. Now it is asking for the width, which is y direction, that is 10 and 10. So here we have the rectangle, but again it is asking for the point where you want to define it in the quadrant. You know that we have the four quadrants, first, second, third, fourth, where you want to define. Select that quadrant, click there, and the rectangle will be created. Go to the dimension, you can check 
the dimension like that we have 10 by 20 size dimension. So shortcut REC, define the first, go to the dimension, define the value like I want to define 5 and 10. We have a rectangle here. Okay. The next option is if you want to create a rectangle that is tilted at an angle, like this line is tilted somewhere at 30 degrees. So in that, in that case, go to the rectangle. Specify the first corner. Okay. Now you can see this is a straight. Go to the rotation. Define the rotation angle. I want it to be at 30 degrees. You can see the line is at 30 degrees now. Okay, so after that, define the values, whatever you need, and your object, your rectangle will be at an angle. Define a reference line, go to the dimension, select the line like that, select this line like that, and you can see where you can go, or you can go directly in the dimension and select the angular, select first line, second line, and there is the angle. Okay, so to create any rectangle at an angle, go to the rectangle, you can see the previous rotation is applied that is 30 degrees. So go to the rotation, to turn it off, press 0, enter, and now you can specify the dimension of the reference like that. So this is the rectangle option in this way you can create the rectangle. Okay, any question? So next we are going to cover the polygon command if you want to create a shape that is triangle, pentagon, hexagon like that. We have an option here below the rectangle that is polygon. So the shortcut for the polygon is P-O-L and press enter. The first option it will ask to enter the number of sides. So suppose I want to create an, uh, a triangle. So number of sides will be 3, press enter. After that, it is asking for a center, but in this case, I know the length of the side. So for that, we have to select the edge option. Now specify the first point. I want my triangle to be here. In which direction you want to create? Turn on the ortho mode to create a vertical or horizontal line like that. After that, specify the length. I want my rectangle to be of length 10. Triangle, sorry, to define the value. Now you can see the length of the side is 10 and all the sides will be of 10 length. Okay. So this is the polygon option. Select the polygon POL to find the number of sides. Now it is 5. You can use the reference also. Go to the edge, select two points, and those two points will act as a reference like that. Or you can specify the value with the number of side like hexagon. I want the side edge option. So define the side which one you want to be straight. Define the value, it should be five length. So all the sides will have five length like that. Okay, any question in polygon? Okay. So the last command we have is the elliptical command, ellipse command. We have the command here. In that we have several types. We can use the arc type in ellipse or we can create the full ellipse from here. So here we have the center option or the option for the shortcut we have EL the center the command will be activated. Now we have three options. First is applied that is axis end. Second is the center type, third is the arc of the elliptical type. So going to select with the center type. So basically it is like center rectangle. You know that ellipse has a major axis and a minor axis. So we need to have two values that will be the major value and the minor value. So going to create that with the help of center. So specify the center, specify the direction where you want to create the dimension first. I want this to be my major axis and that distance will be 10 by center 
and in the other side in the minor axis i want the distance to be 5 so if you select this was the center i have to find this direction with the value of 10 and in this direction i have to find the value to be 5 and check the value from here to here like that it is 5 and from here to the center that is 10 okay this is an elliptical shape if you want to create a circular shape you can also create a circular shape from the ellipse select the center type define now define both the values equal like 5 and 5 it will be created like a circle okay because we have 5 gap from here 5 gap from here it will be an elliptical shape you cannot do that in the circle you cannot create an ellipse from the circle but you can create a circle from an ellipse command so the second option is that axis axis n in that you have to specify first value that will be full value that you have to specify from this point to this point the first distance and the second distance will be half that is from here to here so go to the axis n specify a start point now define the direction you can specify this direction first also or this one also I'm going to specify the first now Remember, this is the axis n, so the first value will be the full value, that will be 20, and the second value will be half, that will be 5. So you can see from this point to this point, this is the 20 value, and from this quadrant to this center, this is the 5 value. So this is the ellipse type with axis n and the center. In the set axis end, you just have to select the first value and that will be the full value. Like I define this direction, I want this height to be total 10 to define the value 10 here. And the second, we have to define the half value. So I'm going to define that value to be around 50. So this will be the elliptical shape from here to here. I have defined the value to be 10 and from center to end. I have defined the value to be 15. Okay, so this is the elliptical shape. If you want to create an elliptical arc, you have to again specify the ellipse. Go to the arc here directly. It will ask on which type you want to create with the help of center, with the help of axis end. You want to specify with the help of center. Specify the center point, specify the direction. I'm going to specify the value 10 and 5 now it is asking for specify start angle i want to start the arc from 15 degree and i want to create the arc up to 135 degree so you can see if you select the object you have the arc here that is starting around 5 to 15 degree and ending at 135 degree if you want to create some references you can do that with the help of lines and you can create a line like that you can check the angle from here to here it is 15 degree and from here to here it is 135 degree okay so this is the elliptical arc point. you can move the arc point from here some other option just turn off the auto and you will be able to move the move it smoothly to some other point like that okay so in this way you can see the arc so again go to the ellipse select the arc option select the center define the center define the elliptical option clearly like 10 and 5 after that okay sorry ellipse go to the arc go to the center type now define the center and define the value the value will be 10 press enter for the second value this is 5 press enter next define the starting angle i want to start from 135 and i want to go up to 225 so this will be the elliptical arc go to the ellipse command select the arc from here or you can select it from here elliptical arc first you have to define the values for the uh, 
ellipse got to be centerized define the center define the direction first it will be the 10 mm and for the second it will be the 5 so here till now we have specified the elliptical shape the major and the minor axis now from where you want to start the angle so the angle should be starting from 45 degree and it is going up to 225 degree like that so you can see we have the elliptical arc here okay you can define the lines like that to check the angle here you can see from here to here this is 45 and you cannot check the angle from this point to this point that it will be 25 you can just check the angle and you know that this is 360 and minus 35 will be 225 so these are the options these are the basic commands in the dot toolbar you can create a use them to create any point okay we will cover some points in the next session from where we will i will show you how to create points like this one like this one how to create those i will show you in the next session okay till now just practice these commands how they work what are the option inside them if you face any problem you can just ask in the group or you can ask in the next session so after this we have an assignment for you so the assignment has some question uh, so in first assignment you will see uh, the assignment will be this one you will have some information here read this information i will show you later first you have the shapes you have to create the shape this one i have already created you have to create this shape i have not shown you how you can create a line at an angle i will show you after this one how to create a line at an angle after that we have this one i have shown you similar drawing but that was some similar radiuses now we have some different radius so line tangent i have already covered you have to create with the help of circle and line after that we have this shape in this shape you have to just create some circle and use the circle command every day to create the circle at a distance use the line command to find out the exact point we have given the dimension here that from here to here this gap is 111.2 from here to here this gap is 50.4 so use the lines to create like use the line for first create two circles like those after that create a line from here create a line like that and after that you will get the center with a circle here create a circle here and again create a line from here to here this point and from this point to this point you will get another center create two circles again like that and after that just remove these lines okay just remove these lines and you will get these shapes so next just create a circle you can see that we have a circle that is tangent here and tangent here like that and we have a radius that is 300 So use the circle that is tangent, tangent and radius. You will get a complete circle like that. You will get a complete circle like that. You will get a complete circle like that. So I have also covered the trim command. So select the trim, the center, and you can select this one, this one, and this one. So after that, you will be left with the shape that you require. Okay. So the last option you have to create. this with the help of a rectangle and with the help of some circle and we have to apply some trim option so here you will have a rectangular shape you will create a rectangle that will be like this one you have to sharp edges you have a radius of 0.5 here to create a circle that is tangent to two sides and we have the radius after that trim out this one and trim out this one you will get a circular 
this space, this edge here. So create that for all the sides. Use the line to find the center. You can select a line from here. From here, you will get the center. You can copy this circle to this location, to this location, to this location. So create these drawings and submit the assignment. So how to submit the assignment? You have to submit that before tomorrow midnight. Okay, you have to submit the assignment before tomorrow midnight. Mail the assignment. Save the file and mail us on the autocad.scicad at gmail.com. Mention these details in the subject. Define your name, college name, the roll number that we have provided to you. Okay. And define the name of the assignment. Right now, the assignment will be assignment one. In the next, you have to type here assignment two. Okay. Not in afternoon, before midnight. Okay. Tomorrow before midnight, submit your assignment. Those who will submit your their assignment and attend regular classes will get the certificate from us for of the Psycad Center. Those who will not submit, they will not get the certificate. Okay, if you face any problem, you can ask, but you have to submit your assignment. So now, how to create the line at an angle? For that, I'm going to show you with the help of a line. So I'm going to select the line command, specify the first point. I want a line that is of 10 value, like that. And now I want a line that is at an angle of 45 degree and has a length of 2 mm. So to do that, we have an option here, down here, the dynamic mode, or you can turn it on from F12. So you can see after creating, after turning it on, we have some dimension with the cursor. If you use the line now, from here, you will see we have the line length and an angle with that. Okay. So now you can create the line length. So to turn on the dynamic mode, you can just go here, select the dynamic input from here. After that, turn it on from here or press F12 to turn it on or off. Then select the line. Specify the first point. So define to create a line straight with 10 mm. So define the 10 value. You can see the 10 is defined here. To switch to the angle, press the tab button, the tab, and define the angle. Right now, I want it to be at 0 degree, like that. Next, we have the 2 length, press tab, and the angle is 45 degree, like that. Okay. Next, we have a line length that is 5, and the angle is 135 degree, like that. You can create your lines at some angle. So in this way, you can create your line. You can check the angle from here. You can see that these two points has an angle of 45 degree, and these two lines, like that, has an angle of 135 degree. You can see that this is the reference angle. Okay. So to cre create your dimensions, create your assignments with the help of these two, and submit them. So how to save the file? Just go to the save here or go to the file, save. Now, a new dialog box will open here. Okay, I have already saved this file. So I can just go here and save as. And here is the option. So save as. Save with a name like assignment. And assignment 1. Before that. You can also mention your roll number, like we have a roll number OLA25ME44. So this will be the your roll number and we have the assignment number here. So save it with the name and mail that to us. Now you will get the assignment from there. Okay, that is OLA. Okay, so you will get 
the assignment on the desktop you can see there is the assignment so simply attach in the mail mail it to us and we will check the assignment after that okay if you have any question you can ask them okay so last two minutes if any question you can ask Okay, I will show you that. Okay, uh, let me give me give me uh, two minutes. Uh, thank you so much, students. I hope uh, you have uh, enjoyed this session. Uh, this was uh, this session was repeated because most of couple of students could not attend it at eight thirty yesterday. So the next session will happen at eight thirty p.m. today. So all you students are requested to continue with the second session of AutoCAD today from eight thirty p.m. to ten p.m. Tomorrow we will not have this session at three thirty. From tomorrow onwards and today onwards, the session will be at eight thirty in the evening today, eight thirty to ten. Okay, please submit all the assignments that are being uh, provided to you on time. So the the time for submitting today's assignment would be midnight tomorrow. Please do that, and just to give you a brief that. the objective of conducting these online sessions the objective of conducting these online sessions is that we make we give some hands on experience to our students on what exactly drafting is we are conducting these kinds of sessions for different students for creo for katia for solid works for analysis softwares and we will continue to deliver these kinds of free online training programs for students please be connected to us and we will do this throughout the year we will keep conducting these sessions throughout the year just to give you a brief about scicad as an organization since we are teaching autocad now scicad is the number one autodesk authorized training partner not only in india in sarc nations in the last award ceremony of autodesk scicad was awarded as the best academic partner of autodesk and that is a big achievement for all of us and that has only been possible because of our trainers and our students who have been performing so well nationally and internationally right so it's it's a pleasure to have all of you here and uh, i hope you will enjoy these sessions with scicad thank you so much and if you have any queries we are available to take your queries in the whatsapp group please do not whatsapp personally please message in the group so that we all can Uh, have a look at your message and we can provide you a solution immediately thank you so much i hope uh, you have a good learning experience with us good day okay so someone has the question how to use the uh, line angle how to create a line at an angle so i have just shown you that use the line command before that turn on the f12 option you will get this option now you can see there is the length and the angle with the cursor so in the blue box this is the length so simply type the length like i want to 10 length to shift to the angle press the tab button it's above the caps lock button the tab will be and you can shift it to the angle option now define the angle you need and the line will be created like that i want another line that is of 10 but this time the angle we need is down side so you can see this angle is right now 45 i need a 45 degree angle below here so press escape to exit out now you can see the angle is defined from this point so if you check the angle So the 45 degree angle that was specified was from here, and the 45 angle that was specified from was from here. So in this way, you can create a line at an angle. Just save this file on the desktop or any folder. Uh, just create a folder in that you have to save your daily assignment. Save the file and go to the mail. attach your file in the mail and submit that with the help uh, with specifying these details in the 
subject you can see you have this email id select this email id to send the message define the subject your name your college name your roll number that we have provided you okay after that the assignment number like assignment 1 and attach the file and submit the assignment like that okay so thank you very much if you have any other question you can ask in the post we're going to end the training now okay